Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Now, many of you may know these two gentlemen in the picture behind me. On the left is Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. On the right is Harry Houdini. Harry Houdini was a well-known magician and escape artist in the early part of the 20th century here in the United States. What many people don't know is that towards the end of his career, he was a social advocate. From 1914 to 1918, World War I was raging, and it destroyed an entire generation of young men on both sides. In the 1920s, many grieving parents sought the services of spiritualists to try and contact their departed loved ones. As a trained magician, Harry Houdini began to take notice of this spiritualism movement and realized that many of the practitioners were frauds. As a result, he devoted much of the latter part of his life to debunking spiritualists. Now, while I am no Harry Houdini, many view science and mathematics as magic because they just don't have the experience dealing with it. Those of us that do tend to see people prey on these individuals, much like the spiritualists preyed on the grieving parents of the 20s. And like Harry Houdini, I'd like to try and debunk a few of them. So when I see obvious trickery in the flat earth and science denying community, I like to call it out. Now recently it came to my attention that a relatively minor but up and coming flat earther by the name of Mitchell from Australia had a video that had some 44,000 views. I was intrigued, so I went and had a look at it. And in addition to the usual misrepresentation of science, I found some outright trickery. So today I'm going to present this video. I'm gonna show you how he did it. I'm gonna show you how to do it correctly. And then I'm gonna show you the scientific errors that he made. So let's cue up the music and get going. Now the first step in any debunk is to let the charlatan make his claim. So I'm going to present the first couple of minutes of Mitchell's video and I'm going to let him make his claim. So here we go. I'm Mitchell from Australia and this is yet another simple observation that anyone can do at home. You have a coin and a flat table and I'm going to demonstrate how we can make an object disappear bottom up without the need of curvature or without the need of a physical obstruction for that matter. Now you globers are going to sit at home and say that table is just higher than the observer height or the camera height. Now let's get that sorted quick smart. When we zoom in, we increase the focal length and increase the angular resolution. And we can resolve that coin in its entirety. As you can see, the bottom of the coin shining, and when you zoom back out, the coin is unresolvable again. Nice flat table, no physical obstruction. This is all optical. There's absolutely no obstruction here. This is due to angular resolution. The angle from the observer to the coin was far too small to resolve the coin. Now when I lay it down, we can still see the coin flat on the table. No problem. And you can still see some table underneath the coin. But when you zoom out, the angular resolution is way too small to resolve that coin. Nothing to do with physical obstruction. And the table definitely isn't curving. 100% of the light of that coin is still reaching the observer. The only thing that is creating this optical illusion of something disappearing bottom up is the angle to which you are viewing the object. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to have a look at his video and see if there are any clues as to what he was doing. Then I'm going to do exactly what he did and I'm gonna show you how he did it and then I'm gonna do it the correct way. Now, the first thing that I'm going to point out is the fact that the camera appears to be below the level of the table and that the coin is right on the edge of the table. So let's go see if there's any evidence for this as we look at the video. 
Now, right here is a shot above the table. And watch as Mitchell lowers the camera to the table level and then lowers it further to his photographic tripod level. So you can pretty clearly see that he is well below the level of the table here. Now, the next thing that I want you to notice is how quickly the bottom of the dime disappears. How far does he have to move it back on the table before it starts to disappear bottom first? He's made it maybe four inches. Do you honestly think that had he been on the level of the table, the bottom portion of would have disappeared that quickly? Now, watch him go the rest of the four or five feet. Halfway gone. How far is he from the edge of the table? Looks like he's at approximately the level of the far edge of that near chair. That's not very far, probably two feet, and already more than half is missing. For those of you that are math inclined out there, why don't you go ahead and see whether or not you can calculate what that angle below the surface would be. I'm not going to bother with it. Now that he's down at the far edge of the middle chair is almost completely gone. Right there. Now let's see if any of you are kind of thinking along the way that I am. Here is a camera with a variable zoom lens. Now this is on low power right now. What happens when I increase the magnification to the lens? It gets longer. Now, if the lens at this position is just below the edge of the table, where is it at that position? Perhaps above the edge of the table? Could we see objects that were blocked by the table at this position when the camera zooms in? Let's go do an experiment in my breakfast room, and we're gonna see whether or not we can reproduce Mitchell's findings. Now the setup for this problem is that I put some batteries on my table, and I aligned my camera with the table, and all I did was I changed the zoom on the camera. Let's go see if I reproduced what Mitchell demonstrated. Now mind you, my lens is a little different than his. You really need kind of a macro lens for this. Mine's not a macro lens, so the focus on it is not perfect. But let's watch. There's the battery. Battery disappears. Battery comes back with zoom. Battery disappears as we zoom out. Now, without moving the camera, I want you to notice that it is definitely tilted lens up a little bit. So instead of being level, it's tilted up a little bit. And you can clearly see that by the bubble on the level that's on the flash attachment. So this is how Mitchell did his shot. He had the camera very close to the edge of the table. He was slightly below the edge of the table. And as he zoomed and brought the camera lens further out, it collected light from above the table that it could not see in this position. Now let's see what happens when you do this the proper way. In other words, you have the lens of your camera even with the tabletop. Now, before we start, let's go ahead and verify that the camera is now level, or more or less level. Now, the other thing that you'll notice is that it's further back from the table so that I get A, a little better focus, and B, any small errors in angle that I have are minimized because it's a much further distance. So let's go see what happens to the batteries when we change the zoom on the lens. Now, before we do anything else, I wanna point out how to tell whether or not your lens is at the same level as the object that you're looking at. Look at the tops of the two batteries. Do you see how they line up? So let's go see what happens when we change the zoom on the camera. Sorry about the shakes. Notice the relationship doesn't change at all. And notice too that you can see the top of the table because even though it's only about an inch and a half or two inches above the level of the table, it's still above the level of the table and we're looking down at the table surface. Now, unfortunately, even at this level of zoom, I can't 
get a good focus on both of the batteries at the same time. I can only focus on one or the other, but I went ahead and changed the focus a little bit so that you could clearly see they are both at exactly the same level. And as we zoom in and out, they don't change. That's the correct way to do this experiment. Now let's listen to Mitchell as he tries to explain this using the Raleigh criteria. Now the Raleigh criterion has to do with the angular size at which you can discern two different points of light. When you get closer than the Raleigh criterion, you discern those as one point of light. Now for human eyes, that's a little bit less than one minute of angle. Let's have a listen to what he has to say. Now what is angular resolution? Well, it all has to do with the way that we view light, whether it be from your eyeball, a camera, or a telescope. In optics, the best focused spot of light that a perfect lens with a circular aperture can make is called the airy disc. Now, as you can see in this left-hand side, there are two points of light and two airy discs. They are both resolved. Now, when they get closer together, this meets the Rayleigh criterion or the diffraction limit. And so the Rayleigh criterion specifies the minimum separation between two light sources that may be resolved into each distinct object. And when the light sources get even closer on the right hand side, they become unresolvable. So relating this to my observation, when the coin is closer to the camera, it is fully resolved. As you start moving the coin away from the camera, it meets the Rayleigh criterion or the diffraction limit. And this creates a greater, a smaller angle, making the coin disappear bottom up. And when you move the coin further away, it becomes fully unresolved. So what he's claiming now is that if you take a dime and you move it the distance of your dining room table, it will start in resolution as a recognizable dime, including being able to read all of the lettering on it, to reaching the Raleigh criteria in about two meters. So let's go ahead and have a look at that real quick. What would the Raleigh criterion be at two meters? So we're gonna start off and we're gonna put in two meters. We're gonna multiply that by two to get the diameter of the circle that you're sitting at the center of. Then we're gonna multiply that by pi and we're going to come up with the circumference of a circle four meters in diameter. We're gonna say 12.57 meters. So we're gonna take 12.57 and we're going to convert it to millimeters. Then we're gonna divide that by 360 to find the number of millimeters in one degree. Then finally, we're gonna divide it by 60 to find the number of millimeters in one minute of angle, which is the Raleigh criterion for the human eye. So here's the way the Raleigh criterion will work. If you are looking with your unaided eye and you're looking at an object that is 0.6 millimeters wide, so and there was a light on the top and a light on the bottom of that object, you would have trouble telling that that was two separate lights versus one light. So let's take our dime and let's see how big it is. I'm getting 17.85 millimeters is the size of one dime. So right here I have a triangle calculator from Math Portal. Now as you see, I've got 17.85 millimeters for the size of the dime, and I have one minute of angle, which is 0 0.0167 degrees. That's one divided by 60. At what distance would a dime equal that angular size? Let's go find out. 61 meters, not two. You're an order of 30 off the correct answer, Mitchell. So the Raleigh criteria has nothing to do with the size of a dime over your dining room table. Nice try. You know, I like this so much the first time, I think we're gonna do it again. Now again, this is the camera lined up properly with the tops of the batteries. Now the reason that I use the tops of the battery rather than the tabletop is so that you could see the relationship between them a little bit better. 
If the camera is on the level of the top of both batteries, they will remain at the same height. If it is above or below the battery, that far battery will change in position. So let's go ahead and just have a look at it one more time, because I just love this part. In we go. No change in the relationship between the tops of those batteries. Zoom out, same thing. Zoom back in, no change. Now it's a little out of focus, as I said, because I can't focus on them both at the same time. But I'm going to stop it right there for just a second, because I want you to look at something. On the near battery, we have an American quarter. And the width of that quarter looks like it's about 1.67 millimeters. Yet on minimum zoom, you can clearly see the thickness of the quarter. How about the dime? Because on the far battery, I have a dime sitting on edge. How thick is a dime? 1.27 millimeters. Let's see, can we clearly see both of them? Let's have a look. Looks pretty good to me. I can clearly see both of them. How about you? Let's see if we can change the focus a little bit. Okay, so there's the quarter. You can see that well enough to see it's not exactly parallel to the top of the table. Let's look at the dime. Look at that dime. 1.2 millimeters. You can clearly see that there's a top and a bottom of that dime. You can see the background behind that edgewise dime very clearly, and you can definitely tell that bottom background from the top background. You can tell that there's something in between it. It's not at the Raleigh criterion yet. So there goes your entire argument, Mitchell. Better luck next time. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you debunk a science denier using their own material. You can catch them in their tricks. You just have to know what tricks to look for. And hopefully this gave you one more to look for. So this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you again for stopping by. And I do appreciate your support of this channel, the Patreons, the members, the subscribers. And remember, right now we're raising some funds for an astrolabe. There's a link to a PayPal donation in the description of this video if you'd like to toss a couple bucks my way for it. It's about three or four hundred dollars, but it'll definitely make some really cool flat earth killing videos. So until then, take care and stay healthy. Bye.